Hi, I'm Shorty Robbins, and this is my tiny house, Nawaka. It's a Victorian tiny house, and it's built to represent how people would have lived during the mid to late 1800s. You'll see some of the things on it and in it are, are designed to show people and educate people how families lived during that period. One of the first things I did is um, provide myself with fresh water. A lot of people that live in tiny houses, they hook up to city water, and I have that capacity too, but I also wanted to be able to be off-grid and have a water source. So I have a pitcher pump, which is the latest in modern 19th century technology. It attaches to a cistern, which is actually a 40-gallon fresh water tank that's in between the axles of my trailer. And I do use that all the time to pump fresh water for coffee, solar showers, uh, cooking, anything that you need water for when you're running off grid. The house is built on an aluminum trailer, so it's really lightweight. The exterior, after I built it with uh, SIPS, I clad the exterior with cypress fencing. It was uh, thin and light and aged and just perfect and took the stain really well. Did my board and batten period siding perfectly and um, was really excited with how it came out. My windows, I have two antique windows here in the front. One's from a church in Tallahassee and the other one I'm not really sure of the location of it, but um, it's just a, a neat true to the period window. So I kind of built the house to, to fit those windows. And all the windows on the side are built from reclaimed cypress. Uh, by an antique window carpenter uh, who, d who does restoration carpentry. My stairs fold up, lattice work that hides the trailer when I'm at Civil War events so you can't even tell that it's on a trailer. So many times people will come up to me and say, this house wasn't here, when did you build this house? <laughs> I brought it in last night, it's on a trailer and they love it. They, they never suspect that it's on a trailer once I have the lattice up and, and I hide all my modern things. So come on inside. So welcome to my home. Like I said earlier, I have decorated it and appointed it with uh, all sorts of period things to interpret life during the 1860s to 1880s. But I also have quite a few modern comforts of home uh, built in. Some of them are period appropriate. Some of them are just flat out hidden and I'll show you a little bit on a little tour of the house. Um, I have a light switch back here. It's behind the door, so it's not really obvious, but that turns on the lights when I come in. And I also have two rows of solar uh, garden lights on either side uh, with little solar indicators up in the front window, so I never have to come home to a dark house, which is really nice. Um, this one's electric, but those two are solar. And then uh, you'll see I have uh, lanterns that provide a beautiful uh, light. Also a lot of warmth in the uh, winter. Um, it really is all we need to heat the house in Florida is those lanterns. But to get it safely down to light it, this is a trick I learned at Fort Clinch where they have 20 foot ceilings. was made by a tinsmith in uh, North Carolina a few years ago. Literally is a housewarming present because I do use it for heat a lot too. And, and this is kind of special, it, it's sort of where I planned out the whole house from because uh, it's where I really started feeling like it was home from sitting in this corner and looking up at the space and feeling how big it was and the kind of room that I had um, in the house. So it was kind of neat. The uh, water tank that feeds the pump is right in this area under the floor. And then just beyond that is a storage space that um, 
Also, uh, I'd, I'd keep the Christmas decorations in there, uh, sort of seasonal things. Also, some of my bigger tools, I have a, a Sawzall in there and a couple of the, the larger tools and things that really don't have a hiding place inside the house. Uh, it is Florida, and so we do have to think about air conditioning if we're going to uh, do any events in the summertime. So I invested in a mini split air conditioner. It's fantastic and it hides right here behind it and it's you, you haven't heard it the whole time we've been talking because it's really, really quiet and it's a perfect solution for us. My sewing machine is from 1887 and it does work. I do not have it threaded because every child that comes in my house tries to crank it and it would jam up. But it's a Wilcox and Gibbs uh, chain stitcher sewing machine, which means it doesn't have an underneath bobbin. And uh, I started collecting those years ago because my family last name is Gibbs. And uh, no relation to the Mr. Gibbs that developed this machine, but I thought it was a neat coincidence. So I've collected and restored those for a long time. The uh, painting is uh, actually of myself and my granddaughter Aurora hanging laundry. And the artist is a friend who just does amazing and beautiful work. And um, what's really fun for us is the painting actually hides <laughs> the TV set. <laughs> so so um, it's a smart TV too, which is really awesome. We don't have cable, but we can do Netflix and uh, videos from our phones and everything. So um, it's very handy to have and I have a really good antenna that gets us TV stations so we don't miss our Jaguars or Gators football and um, The Bachelor, Dancing with the Stars, all the things we have to watch. I do try to live in the period as much as possible, but sometimes we do need electricity and I'd been looking at solar uh, generator systems for a long time and um, recently was overwhelmingly gifted with a, um, a new solar generator and panels. And I've hidden it uh, next to my little period wood stove in my period copper wood box. And that right here is my humless solar generator. That's as loud as it gets, and I can run everything digital uh, or the LED lights off of this with it hardly drawing any power at all. And then if I plug in the TV, the air conditioner, um, or a regular light that's not LED, it, it'll crank back up and, and make some noise, but I don't do that when I'm reenacting period anyway. But it's awesome. Um, I, I've got a hole in the floor, and the plug just runs up through there and, and plugs in there and, and uh, we did all last weekend without a plug and uh, ran off the solar generator so it's pretty neat. Part of what we do is try to show um, even the little things that people would have had in their homes during the period. So um, this is not a popcorn popper, this is a bed warmer. Um, you would put coal in this and stick it in between your sheets. I don't because I have a little dog that's my bed warmer, but this is um, a, a nice, uh, from London, uh, antique bed warmer. Um, we also have a curling iron. No cords on that curling iron. You stick it on the stove and heat it up. And another latest in modern technology, a coal-fired iron. You open it up, you put coals in there, and then uh, iron your clothes with that. Uh, they scorch. <laughs> All of our clothes are modern fabric, so it's breathable. So we have wool, cotton, and linen, and silk. And uh, you have to be really careful when you're ironing them like that. Um, here's my tea kettle that I can uh, heat up water on the stove. Actually, that's a coffee pot that I can heat water up on the stove. Um, Soldier Coffee is really awesome. They don't crack the beans or anything. They just tie the beans in a bag, throw them in there, and you just keep cooking it all weekend. And it really does end up being very good coffee. This kitchen is really a, more of a food prep kitchen than a cooking kitchen because they would have cooked outside. Um, always a risk of fire during the period, so your, your um, kitchen was always in a separate building or just an open fire outside when you were in the, especially a Florida pioneer uh, period of time. And I do have a really extensive outdoor kitchen when I'm set up in one place for a long time. Um, but this is all of the things that I would have used for food prep and also dishwashing area. But one thing I do have hidden behind my awesome bread bowl that I do use to make bread in 
is my little mini kitchen. Everything you need. It's got toaster oven, a cooked surface on top, and a coffee pot. So who, who needs anything else? Um, I'm retired. I go out to eat otherwise. <laughs> This is my closet space. Um, it's actually the dressers that used to be my grandparents' dressers and we turned them on their side and made them open so they're a little closet. With three doors underneath, um, which is really lots of closet space. And then over here are the stairs that go up to the loft area. And each one of those stairs is a set of drawers also. And the one on the corner is sized just right to fit a, a portable washing machine. So um, I have everything that I need hidden and done like it would be done in the period. You go up the stairs, you've got two ladder steps, and then you climb up through the hole in the kitchen ceiling, and that's how you access the loft. Um, it's really easy, and uh, that's where my granddaughter stays when we're out at, at an event. In the proper Victorian parlor, you always had a piano. It was a status symbol. But in the practical Victorian parlor, especially in a tiny house like this, your piano had to do double duty. So after your guests left for the evening, a couple of quick steps. your piano turns into your bed. My mom um, made the quilt for me. It's um, a salesman sample uh, design. They would make quilts out of all the different fabrics that they had. But what she did was ask all of our friends to uh, give her blue fabric because she had already had the border the border fabric came from Holland and um, so she already had that and um, so all our friends donated blue fabrics so when I look at it I know whose dress is in my quilt and that's really fun too um, to just uh, know all of the family and feelings and everything that's involved in my quilt is pretty neat back to playing the piano Alexis and Christian here with Tiny House Expedition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And click left or right for more tiny house stories and tours. 